So great catching up with the Bellator middleweight champion, Gegard Mousasi, who's going to be back in action against Johnny Eblen, Bellator 282, June 24th. Gegard, how are you, man? I'm good. Good to hear. How did training go? <laughs> I know you, uh, I know you uh, just finished up training. How did everything go? Yeah, good. Ready and same as usual, you know. Yeah, fight. okay. I'm so excited about the fights. I I, I can tell you're you're holding back the excitement there. It's uh, it's great. Um, you, you fought uh, you fought four months ago, and here we are uh, talking about another fight. You must have been happy to get fights so close together because I know that was a, a thing you you wanted to keep active. Yeah, Scott uh, promised to keep me busy. Uh, I think the whole roster is gonna get, keep uh, keep fighting a lot. Uh, so uh, this fight, and then end of the year, I'm gonna have another one. So three fights this year. I'm uh, I'm happy. That's excellent. Did you know much about Johnny Eblen when, when they offered you a, him as an opponent? Or did you know about him? No. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, so did, was it one of those things you had to go kind of look him up or do, you, do your coaches assess him? Like how, when you have an opponent like this that you're not familiar with, who, who does the scouting? Is that you or your coaches? I don't need to look at videos. I'm too good for, for them. Okay. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you have had a chance to, to look him up, um, what, what, what do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? Uh, yeah, pretty good. You know, the last two opponents were uh, similar. I think uh, both were wrestlers who wants to take you down, hold you. I know exactly what he wants to do. And um, he think he's going to... We probably want to fight, stand up for one or two rounds and then go back to wrestling. Uh, yeah, you, you brought up a good point. They are him and uh, Austin Vanderford are very similar. I think they even train on the same team. Um, is, is the preparation very similar to what you had for Austin Vanderford as well? Uh, same as the uh, wrestling defense, getting up. Wrestling defense, getting up. I think uh, he's uh, if he, if he can take me down, he's in trouble. If I stuff his takedown, he's in trouble. On the ground, he's in trouble. Everywhere he's in trouble. Even in the backyard, he's going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, you look like you got plenty of notice for this fight. I imagine you got a full training camp? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm ready. And, and has training been primarily the same, just uh, business as usual? You do any cross-training this camp, or has it just been the same uh, group of guys? Same guys, you know. Uh, I never. Uh, I don't need the new guys. You know, I have my training partner, my friends. Uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing this for a long time with the same guys every time. I don't. I never bring a new guy in. Yeah, I mean, if fight. you're winning, if you're winning, why why change things up? Who who have been some of the main guys you're working with? Uh, give me a few names of some of the guys you get to work with. Well, my friend Gokan, uh, Costello, uh, Rainier, uh, Ricardo. Steady on camera, you know, those are my coaches. Uh, uh, Joey. Uh, so uh, let's say I do wrestling with one friend, uh, the getting up with another one, uh, the stand up with another one, with, you know, because the, they're all good at one area. Mm -hmm. So um, I try to learn from them uh, on, their spe uh, on their specific. Uh, specialty you know if they're a good ground fighter i train with them on the ground if they're a good wrestler i wrestle with them you you mentioned castella vancinas i know he was dealing with some injuries is he gonna is, is he gonna be fighting here soon because uh, i know we haven't seen him in, in a while uh yeah he, he's, he's coming well he, he can do grappling everything so uh, uh i don't know if uh his physician has given him the okay to go but uh he, he trains a lot with us, uh, he, almost everything, ground, only no wrestling yet. And, and he must be such a good training partner to have. He's younger, he's in your weight class. Like, how, how much of an asset is it having him uh, in, in the gym with you? Well, I don't train a lot with him because I train with heavyweights. Uh, I train with heavyweights because um, uh, I feel if they cannot keep me down, then uh, John Urban, uh Don Eblen, Johnny Eblen is not going to keep me down. If a heavyweight cannot take me down, he's not going to take me down. If he takes me down, if a heavyweight cannot hold me down, I will get up. You know, so I may, I try to make everything more difficult in training. 
How much sparring do you do in camp? I know fighters, as they're getting later into their career, like someone like Robbie Lawler, for example, he doesn't do that much sparring anymore. Do you still spar a lot or do you kind of reduce it a bit? Because you, you know how to fight, right? It's it's just more of, you know, keeping things sharp. I, I spar uh, four times a week. Oh, cool. uh, but mainly more ground. I don't do a lot of uh, stand-up. It's more, uh, I don't, I, I never go hard. I have, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I have memory problems already. I don't need the uh, fucking brain damage. So it's right. a lot of grappling and wrestling and stand up a little bit, but barely touching each other, you know? Okay. When you say you have memory problems, is that because of MMA or just as you're getting older? Because I forget uh, things too yeah. and I don't fight. I just, uh, I always had that. Even when I was 14, 15, I couldn't remember the name of the school kids, so. Okay. It's something they always had, so i rather keep them uh, intact. Yeah, no, no, un- understandable for sure. Um, how about the weight cut? I know we talked about this last time. How, how's everything going ahead of the fight, especially with you uh, fighting in the U.S. again? I'm sure you got to cut a little bit more back home. Uh, I eat more. I like to eat chocolate, so the <laughs> weight cut is a little bit more difficult because I'm tired of fighting. But yeah. we will make the weight as usual and no problem. But uh, yeah, a little bit more uh, difficult because, you know, dieting whole life for what? I'm tired. Yeah. And and, and, and I know uh, there's been some talk about you maybe, maybe going up to 205. Uh, I, I mean, is, is that a possibility at this point or do you still want to see what, what's left at 185? Yeah, uh, depends. Um, you have your Romero at the middleweight, maybe, and you have uh, Corey Anderson, or you know, what's the Russian name? I forget every time. Uh, Nemkov. Nemkov. Yeah. <laughs> Nemkov. You know, I don't. I don't make the match, but I'm not gonna wait on them because uh, I'm gonna fight end of the year, and they're gonna fight. They have already a opponent lined up, so probably uh, just gonna move on and see uh after that who they're gonna give me you know well how, how many more fights i mean you know again not looking past june 24th but how many more fights do you see yourself having at 185 because like you said as you're getting older it sucks cutting that much weight i imagine you want to you know maybe finish your career at 205 well 205 those guys are huge yeah, uh, yeah. i have nothing to do there if i go i go grab the belt and uh you know go back to middleweight <laughs> Okay, fair enough. I like the honesty there. How do you see this fight playing out on June 24th? I know you feel like you're going to get your hand raised. Otherwise, why sign the contract? But how do you envision it going down? I see myself winning and uh, impressively. And uh, that guy is... He doesn't know what he's facing. So we're going to see, you know, um, I'm confident more than ever. I'm better. And... um, yeah, <laughs> you know what can I do? Uh, I think uh, maybe it can go to decision. Maybe I finish him uh, pretty early. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but uh, whatever happens, happens. Even if I do that, you know, I'm coming to fight. I'm coming to, I'm coming to finish him. I think with that mentality, anything can go wrong. But it's better than coming and just trying to win because you know. I'm, I'm going to come there with the mentality to finish him. And, uh, the, you know, the things, uh, uh, the, yeah, less can go wrong with that mentality, you know. So yeah. I'm coming there uh, to do harm, you know. Um, a week after you, there's the UFC middleweight title fight between Israel Adesanya and Jared Cannon. I was just curious how you think that fight plays out. It's interesting with Jared because he's got a lot of power, obviously. How do you see that one going down? Well, you know, Israel is more technical, of course, you know. I think he's too technical. But anyone has his day, anyone has his chance, you know. You never know. But, uh, of course, you have to go with Israel in that fight. But uh, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with Jared uh, because he's tough, tough guy. Uh, Those guys are always dangerous. Any fight is dangerous. You never know. But, uh, of course, uh, Israel is favorite. What about uh, Luke Rockhold? What do you think about him coming back and fighting Paulo Costa? That's a good fight. They're big, big guys. It's mainly going to be stand-up, I think. 
and yeah, that the never thought about that fight to be honest. Uh, that's a that's an intriguing fight to be honest. Uh, would you would you favor Costa in that fight just because he's fought more often? Like Rockhold doesn't fought, I think, since the Jan Blahovich fight, which was I want to say 2019 July. It was it's been a it's been a while. Well, yeah, he's a veteran, you know. We, uh, I don't know what kind of shape he is uh, coming off losses. He hasn't fought for a while, so you never know. But uh, I feel like uh, skill wise, Luke Rockhold is much better, you know. But uh, like I said. We just have to wait to see. Uh, just a couple other fights I wanted to ask you about. What about the uh, featherweight title fight between Alex Volkanovski and Max Holloway? Their third fight, Volkanovski's won two fights. Who do you see winning the third one? I haven't watched those uh, fights, to be honest. Oh, Volkanovski? Yeah, no worries. Okay, what about uh, Jack Hermanson and Darren Till in middleweight? Who do, who do you see edging out that one? Uh... Darren Till, because we're in a blockchain together, so I'm rooting for him. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, fair enough. What about Amanda Nunes and Juliana Pena, the rematch? Of course, Pena upsetting Amanda Nunes. Do you think uh, Nunes can win the rematch? That is a very interesting fight, and I don't care. <laughs> okay, I like it. I and don't then, know. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, uh, I don't know. I, I like the honesty. No, that's good. Okay, last one I want to ask you about was just uh, Robert Whitaker is fighting Marvin Vittori in Paris. Who do you see winning that middleweight fight? Who? Robert Whitaker is oh. fighting Marvin Vittori. Robert Whitaker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, I think Robert Whitaker. The problem is Israel is uh, is there, so that otherwise he would have been champion. Um, we, we talked earlier about, uh, you know, you may be going up to 205. Um, I imagine you think you all Romero is going to beat Melvin Manhoff or how do you see that fight going? Cause obviously you're pretty familiar with Melvin. Uh, well, Melvin, I know him pretty well. I hope Melvin wins. But I don't have to fight your Romero. <laughs> <laughs> do you, but, but, but that's... Uh, I don't care. You know, I, uh, you know, I'm a fighter or whoever they give me a fight. Mm, your Romero is, is always dangerous, you know? Because when he wins, he wins. Um, he knocks you out. He breaks your jaw or whatever. So it's a risky fight. But uh, I, you know, like I, I, whoever they give me, you know, they give me this guy. After this, I don't know who they give me. I fight him. Well, do you think part of the thing as well is that there's a lot more sort of opportunities, uh, opponents at 205 than there is at 185? Like, if you beat Johnny Eblen, like, I don't even know who would be next for you, right? Like, do you have any idea who could be the next yeah, middleweight? Yeah, Fabian uh, Edward, I think. Fabian uh, Edwards, yeah, I guess would be the only other one, yeah. Or uh, the Russian Tokov, but I don't know, you know, the situation with Russian fighters. Um, uh, why would I go to 205? I will go 205, fight for the belt. Win the belt, give it back to them, <laughs> and come back to 185 because that's my division. Yeah. Why would I, uh, you know, I don't have a 20, uh, 30 pounds. Where do I get 30 pounds uh, of muscle in, uh, in that time? Those guys are too big. No, no, you bring up a great point. And I know, uh, again, you perform a lot better at, at 185, like you've said. Um, so I, I guess if any of I those guys like. Today, I feel. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to disagree. Except with the that. idol, fucking Shimlenko, other eyes. Oh yeah, that's fine. Um, the uh, <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna say though. So yeah, if Romero was to fight you, it would have to be at 185. You wouldn't fight him at 205. No, he's a, he's a big, big guy. I can fight 205, but why would I give him the advantage? Let him come down 185. I fight him. Yeah. And then, so yeah, and you, so you'd only go to 205 if it was for the title, which I understand because you're you're the middleweight champion. You have a lot of leverage here. Yeah, I don't know. I go uh, <laughs> because I promised that we'll do it. Okay. Um, what did you think of Habib, Habib Nurmagomedov giving you some uh, props after your, your last win? Uh, I think he said that you're the most underrated, one of the most underrated fighters in MMA. What did you think of that? Yeah, I appreciate this comment like that because uh, a lot of people uh, follow him, you know. So uh, thank, uh, I'm thankful for the recognition. Yeah. Were you expecting that from him? Like, I don't think you guys have ever, you know, there's no connection to either of you. So for him to say that out of the blue, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, 
Well, I said nice things about him in the past. I always said he deserved a title shot. And um, I don't know if he's writing or his manager, you know, I, you know, still, uh, you know, I appreciate it. Yeah, that's good. Um, where, where do you rank him on the greatest of all time list? You know, like you think of like, you know, George St. Pierre and John Jones and but Habib's the only one who was undefeated. Where would you put him in the greatest of all time list, in your opinion? Well, uh, top three. OK. Who would be in the other? Who would be the other two in that top three? GSP or uh, John Jones. You know those three guys. Okay, that, that's sad. I'd, I'd say that's a great list. And uh, I know in your interview with my buddy uh, Robin Black, I, I know that you had talked about you know the UFC uniform deal. Do you ever think of like if you had stayed with the UFC, how much less money you would be making? Like, does that? Do you ever think like what a great decision that was to come over to Bellator? UFC, you make money when you're champion. If you're not champion, you go back to your old, uh, old uh, contract. So, if you're, yeah, uh, there's only one middleweight champion. Yeah. So I, I, I feel like uh, I'm worth. Uh, after all these years, I should get paid a certain amount, and uh, I don't care if I have the belt or not. So, uh, but the the structure there is more uh, favored if you're a champion or not. So, and uh, for me, yeah, Bellator was much better. Has the has the UFC ever reached out to you since you've been with Bellator to try and bring you back? Has there been any talks with them at all? No, no. Okay, but I have I have, just... a, I have a, after this uh, another four fights. With Bellator, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you're locked in for a while, and I think you've told me you want to retire with Bellator, right? That's the plan. After four fights, I don't, I don't even like fighting now. Let alone after four fights. Okay, well, why don't you like fighting? I'm curious. Is it just because you? I mean, you've had more fights than most people. I would imagine that's probably the reason. Uh, I, I like eating. I like <laughs> sleeping well. I like my health. Uh, but so uh, I, I don't enjoy fighting. Uh, but it pays well. After this, I gotta go on a nice holiday and uh, buy a new car. So <laughs> those things are nice. <laughs> where, where are you going on holidays? Do you have anything booked? Yeah, I'm gonna go Italy, oh, cool. Switzerland, and France. And is it just a vacation, or will you do some training in there too? No, after this, I'm not going to train him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good stuff. I'm not going to go to a gym for a while. Have you thought about what you would want to do after, after your fighting career is over? Help my friends with their fights. And... I don't Co know. Uh, eat. Coaching maybe or business? Oh, maybe? yeah, just coaching maybe, uh, you know, uh, coaching and... Uh, uh, enjoy life. I'm tired of fighting. You know? There's uh, maybe I don't know. I go more on holidays. Would you ever want to do stand up comedy? You know, you've become quite the uh, the, the funny guy in, in your in your interviews. In fact, one of my favorite moments ever was when you were on that panel on on the UFC on Fox, and Michael Bisping was talking about your loss to Uriah Hall, and you said, "Listen, sometimes flukes happen." Like when uh, you beat Luke Rockhold, and remember, like Bisping, like you just it completely surprised me. It was hilarious. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, it was good. I, I, I do respect uh, Bisping a lot. He's a nice guy. And uh, but, but that uh, was a good zinger. You know, Bisping's good at talking trash, but yeah. you had him there. I thought that was great. Yeah, yeah, I think I had him. It was checkmate. But <laughs> <laughs> do people yeah, still talk nice. about that? Even all these years later, I still see that clip come up, and I laugh every time. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm uh, more myself nowadays in the interviews than well, I used to. I was going to say, it's interesting because if you go back and watch some of your old interviews, like when you fought in dream, it didn't seem like you were very comfortable doing interviews. And now it's the opposite. Like, I think we really get to see who you are and you, you even like joke around a lot. When did that change for you? Well, you know, you get used to it, you know, the, you know, and, uh, back then, uh, Japan was a little bit more, you know, you come, you talk about the fight and you go, home. you fight and you go, home. us is a little bit different. Us. What did you eat? When did you go on holiday? You know, all that crap. So you, you talk more. <laughs> yeah. Um, what uh, what video games are you playing right now? Nothing. I, no? uh, oh, yeah. Horizon. 
and I'm gonna play uh, Sniper Five, but I haven't played it yet. I don't play video games anymore. No, how come? I'm more mature. Oh, come on! Everyone plays video games. Even I play video games. Yeah, I know. Uh, I don't know. Lately, I don't have a time. Yeah, I used to play all day, not every day mm -hmm. almost, but nowadays, not so much anymore. I'm getting old. Yes, I, I hear you. Well, I think we're around the same age, so I understand you. But uh, it, have you ever thought about doing any streaming, like uh, you know, playing video games to the rest of the world and talking smack while you're doing it? Because I think I think it would look pretty good. I think you'd do a good job with it. I don't know. I don't know. I, you think I'm popular, but I'm not that popular. I, just, I, I don't know, to... man. You, you want to listen? People can look. Habib's calling you one of the most underrated fighters ever. You're one of the best middleweights of all time. You, you don't. You got to give yourself some more credit, don't you think? I've been doing it a long time, but I'm not that popular. Like uh, because uh, I don't know, just maybe nationality, or uh, I don't know, it's never. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't well, you haven't gotten like, in uh, trouble either. You got you got to get in trouble like Conor McGregor, right? Conor McGregor gets in trouble. He's more popular. Well, that guy's a cokehead. Of course, he's gonna get in trouble. Gotcha. Um, before we go, um, I, I gotta ask uh, if there's you 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 sorry you caught me off guard with that. You fought everywhere in the world. Is there one place you haven't fought that you'd like to fight at some point in your career as your career is winding down? Yeah, I think uh, Holland was in the planning before COVID, and now COVID is gone. Now maybe the Belter will come back to Holland. Uh, they they were trying to come and uh, they wanted to do Amsterdam. And uh, the mayor of Amsterdam somehow don't like uh, fighting events uh, because they're uh, left left party crap, you know. So they're trying to get that push it through, you know. <laughs> yeah. No. Of course. Yeah. I guess that that would be like a great ending to your career if you could yeah. fight in, in in Holland before everything's done, right? So let's see yeah. if Scott Coker can work on work on it. Look, they're they're doing events in Hawaii. The UFC still hasn't been there, so I think Scott can work something yeah. here in Holland. Maybe we'll see. Well, the, yeah, there were the first uh, one uh, in France, and then uh, Bellator, and they want to be also the first in Amsterdam. So that would be nice. I agree. Gegard, thanks for doing this, man. I know uh, you can get back no to problem. some good eating and, and everything else. If there's anyone you'd like to thank, any sponsors, anything you want to plug, the floor is yours, man. Blockchain. Uh, go buy some Bitcoin, bitches. <laughs> <laughs>